Hello and welcome to Mechanical Mashup. It's been a while, but Dave's trying to get into outer space and that takes a little bit of effort and I've just had a new baby. Hello and welcome to Mechanical Mashup. reason why we haven't been making episodes here recently is that my wife and I just had a new baby and Dave has been doing some sort of secret Illuminati Area 51-ish kind of thing that we can't really talk about. But we will keep you updated really soon here. Hopefully in January you'll get to find out what Dave's super secret project was. On the same note, Dave's going to be launching his phone into space. And it takes a little bit of effort. Like if you start taking a look at some of these clips, going to space is not all that easy. Yeah, okay, let's be a little more realistic here. Dave going to space is a little more like this. Woo! Look at me! Woo! Woo! So now in our household we have an infant and we have a five-year-old. And the energy level that is necessary to keep the household going with that is gone up a little bit. So I've decided that I need to get into better shape. Part of that is, is losing a little bit of weight. The other part is fitness. Now, I got Tim Ferriss's 4-Hour Body. Great book. So far, I've just been doing the diet. Diet alone for 3 weeks and I've lost 15 pounds. In the 4-Hour work week, Tim recommends working out with a kettlebell. Great idea. Thing is, is that not all gyms have kettlebells and they're not cheap to buy. So, Tim shows you how to make a T-handle out of pipe fittings. And it's really good. I think it's awesome. Here, take a look at it. And you can see here, very simple construction. You have pipe nipple, flange, a couple of pieces here to make a handle, and it is very, very straightforward. This will cost you, like I said, about $10. Then you have regular plates. So we were using a 54 or a 53 pound kettlebell just before. That's 50 pounds of plates, a few pounds of parts, and that is a T-bar. Now that's really cool. The problem is, is that I travel a lot. And I also like to only have carry-on luggage. Last problem is, is if I go to a gym somewhere, chances of a hotel gym or a local gym around there having kettlebells is actually pretty small. So I want to have something that I can modify and take with me. Now I could see having some pipe fittings in my luggage not making security very happy. And I could see something like this happening. No, no, no. And, and then unfortunately, maybe a little of this. Then maybe something like this. To a mentally ill person, the ordinary sights and sounds of a jail can be doubly disturbing. Whenever possible, he should be put in a cell well away from other inmates. Now, Paul, I'll put you in here so that you can get some quiet and some rest. Is this man really a mental case? When the doctor finally sees him, he may appear quite rational. And that's just not a cool way to start a trip. Now, first thing, if you're going to be building one of these things, make sure that you buy some tubular webbing or you go to a mountain equipment shop of some sorts, you get some tubular webbing or some rope and get some good quality rope. You want something that has a high tensile breaking. And I recommend something that won't break or is rated for at least a thousand pounds. If you have that, you should be okay. Now, we're going to do a little bit of math for this, right? You need to know how many G-forces are going to be exerted on the rope when you're swinging it in the kettlebell swing that Tim Ferriss shows. Now, to get this, you need to take the RPM, or revolutions per minute, and you want to square them, and you want to multiply that by the radius of the swing in centimeters, 
And the last thing is that you need to use a constant. That constant is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 8. Now I've worked out the distance from the shoulder to the hand and then a little further for the kettlebell is about 95 centimeters. So now we have 95 centimeters, know the radius. And if you take a quick look at this clip, we can time out how many seconds it takes to do one half of the swing or from when he goes from the bottom to the top. And from that we can figure out approximately how many RPM there is. Now, when you plug all this stuff into the formula, it works out to 0.2 g's, or 0.2 of acceleration of gravity, equal to gravity. So the worst case scenario is, is when the swing has come down to the bottom of the pendulum, you gotta add one, which is gravity alone, and 0.2 to that, to the weight, to figure out the maximum force that is being exerted on that rope. And now, on to our knot lessons. First, we're going to cover the overhand weave back, and the other is the double fisherman. I will show you how to do it quickly here, and if you can't figure it out, go to YouTube and check out the overhand weave back and the double fisherman, and you'll be able to figure this one out. First knot we're going to show you is called the overhand weave back. This is a very simple knot. All you have to do is an overhand knot. Everybody was taught this when they were children, and it should look just like that. The neater you keep a knot, the stronger it will be. The next thing is, is we're going to imagine that this is actually just a loop and it's coming back. But just so that we can make sure that you understand what's going on is that you take, make sure that you have a one inch leader here and you take that white piece and you weave it back through like this and you have a little bit of extra. And then you follow it around, follow that black one around all the way around, just like that and come out to the other side and just give it a tug. And there is an overhand weave back. You wanna leave about a one inch tail on both of these just to make sure that you have the as much strength as possible. And this is one inch tubular webbing. It is extremely strong and more than adequate for what we're gonna use this for. This is going to be what's called a double fisherman's. So, Without paying attention to any of this, all you're going to be doing here is that you're going to take the rope, you're going to pinch so you have like a little bit of a loop, and you're going to come around the rope once, twice, and you're going to feed it back through these two loops that you just created. And it takes a little bit of work, but essentially that's what it looks like. So, what you end up having to do is you do it right around a piece another piece of rope so hold the two pieces of rope parallel go once twice around and once you've gone twice around you want to come underneath and weave it into to the rest of the the two loops that you had just made and give it a little snug up so that you have two two loops and again when you tie it it'll look just like this one thing I do just to make sure everything's nice and neat is that you take this side away from the tail end and just flip it over top so you get a nice neat looking knot. Then what you do with this rope here is just repeat the process. So you go around once, twice, then feed it through those two loops that you just created, pull it snug, and again just flip that little guy over there. And again remember what I said before is that the neat it, the neater it looks, the stronger it is. And pull it tight. There you go, the double fisherman. Now I'm going to show you two different methods to create a kettlebell. One's going to require two pieces of PVC pipe, and one is going to require one piece of PVC pipe. When you cut these things, it's very important that you deburr and de edge the inside rim of the PVC so that it does not cut through your rope. If it does start cutting through your rope, throw the rope away and make sure that you clean out the inside of the PVC just like I'm about to show you. So the next thing that we need is two pieces of 3 quarter inch PVC tube. Uh, you schedule 40. One needs to be 5 inches long and one needs to be 6 inches long. So what we're going to do is we're going to make mark one at 5, mark one at 6, just like that. 
use our handy dandy cutters. If you don't have cutters like this, feel free to use a saw. That's fine. That's one piece. And the next thing, now that we have two pieces, you can clean out the inside here. You need to make sure that that edge is not sharp. So you can use a utility knife and come in here and carve that out if you really want to. I have like a little deburring tool. This thing is super handy. So you just come in, clean that out, and you'll notice that it's no longer sharp on the inside. That's exactly what you want. This side's already been done. Let's just go through this one more time just to be safe. There you go. So you can see that it smooths that out perfectly. And we'll do the same thing for this pipe. This one is not as critical to to not having sharp, but you know, if you're going to deburr stuff, you might as well deburr everything. Just like that. The last thing we need to do is about, I don't know, half an inch up from the bottom. Something like about there. You're going to drill a hole all the way through that is large enough to take the spring pin that we have. So. So now we get a new drill bit and a new battery and we'll get right through there. And once that's just big enough to make sure that we can pass this pin through easily and lock it. And that is what is going to stop the weights from falling through, at least on one of them. So what we have here is a 3 8 lint pin and it will be passing through the hole there and our handle. And we got some weights here and these are just standard weights and the one advantage to them is, is that Three quarter inch PVC just fits through pretty nice. So here's how we're going to assemble this. First thing we're going to do is we're just going to take a long length of rope. What I found that works is about 35 inches. The distance might vary for, for some people, but what we're going to do here is that we're going to pass the rope through the handle. And then we're going to just start one side of the double fisherman knot here. And I know some of you are thinking this rope looks pretty scrawny, and it is, but it also has a breaking strength of 750 pounds, way past what we need it to be. So what we're going to end up doing here is once the double fisherman is fully tied, is pass it in there. But first thing that we need to do is we need to press or slide this guy down into the hole and have it so it just peeks its head out the bottom. And once we know that distance there is we'll shorten this guy up. So let's just bring this out so it's easier to adjust. Sometimes you get your pinky in there and just pull it out so it just is showing. And you can see that I can still shorten it up just a wee bit. So about like that. So I know that the length of the rope needs to be about this. And then we'll complete our double fisherman with this end here. Just like that. Snug it up. Cut off the end. Make sure you always leave about a one inch tail on the ends of these pieces of rope. Just like that. And at this point, we tuck that knot into the end. And what we'll do next is that we'll start adding some weight. So we'll add, we'll try to make this look like a kettlebell. So that's 20 pounds of weights right there. We're going to pass this guy right into the end. 
use our pinky to pull out the piece that we have. Now what we do is that you look down at the hole and you make sure that the spring pin on the inside passes through the rope, through those holes as well. So you can see right there, hopefully, that it does that. And we've got it locked, locked in there. Now, the weight is going from the rope into the pin and then onto the weights. This piece of PVC bears no weight at any point in time. And there you have it, kettlebell number one. Simple, light, and the only thing that I had to purchase because I had this kind of stuff laying around, and if you're a handy kind of person, you probably have this around the shop, is this linchpin, and it cost me 12 cents. Already had the weights, already had the PVC, already had the rope. So the second one, if you go to regular gyms, they probably have weights like this, much larger hole than to hold one of these guys. So all you need is one piece of PVC and the tubular webbing. At this point, we're going to use the overhand weave back. So let's just start one end. And again, make sure that you have about a one inch tail on it. And it looks nice and neat and lays down flat just like that. And we've got 10, 20, 30 pounds of weight here. So the next thing is pretty simple. So I'm going to pull this off to the side so I can lift it up. Pull the webbing all the way through. Then we're going to push the webbing through the handle. Just like that. And we have the knot here. Now we want to keep this fairly tight because when the knot starts to tighten up, it will start to uh, make a longer piece of webbing. So let's just go to about there. So we know that, and I'm just going to pinch that right against that one inch tail and we'll start doing the weave back and after you've done this you can just have the webbing you can tuck into the handle the extra webbing you can tuck into the handle or you can just cut it to length if you're going to be using it on a regular basis so now we got that weave back Looks nice and neat. Tighten it up. Then what we do is grab the handle. And this is a little off of the screen, but there you go. That is the way the kettlebell on this one looks. Granted, it doesn't necessarily look like a kettlebell like the other one, but it works just as good. And you can see how I could have made this handle a little shorter, but this will do in a pinch. And all you're carrying is a little piece of PVC and some tubular strap webbing. There we have it, kettlebell number one. This one costs 12 cents because of this doodad right there. Really simple, works really well, and is plenty strong for the weight that you're gonna take with it. Kettlebell number two, maybe not as pretty, but it's cheaper, and well, you know, hey, it works. And if I have something like this without the weights in my carry-on, no one's gonna question anything. Well, there you have it, how to make a 12 cent kettlebell. Super cheap and avoids having to get intimate with airport security. We will be making some more mechanical mashups here soon. Just like I had said previously, Dave's going to be launching his phone into space. And I've got a couple of really cool things coming up here in the near future. So I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Don't forget, friend us up on Facebook and tell your buddies about this show. Because that's how we can keep things going.